Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Hey, the top end of Stevenson! Welcome to Football Daft, the Daft of Scottish Football podcast around. My name's Stephen Purden and let's welcome your starting lineup. First, a man who this week ended up presenting the travel reports on Go Radio and was very, very good at it. It's Grado. Well done, mate. Yeah, I was doing well at it. Did you, did you see my... Right. Did you put my, my videos on that? It was brilliant, right. man. But right. I cannot... I cannot like, that. There's, there's, been a, there's been an overturned lorry on uh, the M6 and if you're driving down there, just be careful. I liked all that, mate. It was pure professional. Aye. I, 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 but you know what? Because I was giving all that. Look, if you're late for your work, don't have a chip in your shoulder. Right? Because that was, is... And then, and then once it once it cleaned up, what was I said? I went and said something like fucking, uh, that's the tatty's all clear now on the M1. Uh, the roads are now looking crisp. Right, I was delighted with myself, right? So, but I was also nervous, right? Because I'm thinking, I hope this guy's all right. Do you know what I mean? Like, we are pure. But this morning, I, I made a right ass at the end this morning. He's like, right here this morning, just a wee bit at the end, right? It's what? like totally like pure nervous. I didn't know what to say, right? Man, what's that? Denver, Gary Hill's temperature, if it likes there which could slow your old man and down. Grailson Road and Waterside, if you're travelling through East Renfrewshire, watch out for that because there's temperature traffic lights there. And also at Manford Road at Kings Park and Castle Milk Road. A wee bit of temperature traffic lights there to keep you, keep you, um, going. <laughs> <laughs> They're a lap, you're gutted, look. <laughs> what? <laughs> wee, 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 wee bit of tra- temporary traffic lights there to, to keep, keep you going. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were good at it, man. You gave it, you gave it. Do you know what, man? Right up until that this. moment, you were, you were brilliant. Aye, you honestly, aye, you sounded aye. like somebody after the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but anyway, that's, that's, the, that's the, highest, the highest compliment I can give you there. Aye, it's, real, it's, a, it's a very good compliment. It is, you sound like somebody after the radio. And now, let's welcome a man who is one of the very few out there, the lucky ones. The jammy ones, I'm very jealous of them. One of the men who has pre-ordered a PlayStation 5, it is Crystal. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Can't, I hide, can't hide debt, Stephen. Can't hide debt, mate. Can't hide debt, mate. You can't hide debt. Were, were you just right in there? Did you wait till it launched and then boom, right in there? You know what? It was, I got a phone call at 8 o'clock this morning. I wouldn't have been woke up otherwise. Mm-hmm. And I knew that Amazon were getting them at nine, so I thought I'll just stay up and chance my arm. Well, and well, when, well. I, when I went on, I typed in PlayStation 5, and any time I clicked on it, it was just taking me back to the search page. And then eventually, I pressed the button, and that holy grail appeared, pre-order confirmed. Beautiful. That's a buzz. Is it for you, or is it for the wee man? But... Well, I say it's for the wee man, but really it's for the both of you. Know what I mean? uh-huh. we, we, play, we play together anyway, so. Did I've said to the missus, man, that's what I have for my Christmas, man, but I don't know if she's going to be able to get me one now. Do you know what to do, Stevie? What I would do the now is pre-order controllers. Because Mate, she, that's what I was going, I was going to buy. The, I was going to buy the controllers, I was going to buy the headset and have all the fucking gear apart from the actual console. And then the console's the last piece of the jigsaw. You know what I mean? Aye, it's like, do you remember when the PlayStation 4 came out? The fucking controllers, Aye. mate. You couldn't get them for love and money at Christmas time, so Aye. if you're getting a PlayStation for Christmas, you're as well buying the fucking stuff. Aye, get on and get it. I've asked, I've asked for one, but I know I'll just end up playing it. I've asked for one. I'm, I, I take it I'll not be getting one now, then if they're all set out. But I, I never know, Stephanie might have sneakily got you. Are you pre order it? He's good that things like that, by the way. That might have happened, actually. That's a shout. But um, I fucking no, I want no, I want to do my flight simulating and all that. Aye. I bought an absolute screamer, a custom built uh, computer, and as soon as I bought it, man, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's on tech, right? But <laughs> it's uh, honestly, I don't know what, I don't know what I'm playing it. I, I went and sent it to one of my computer mates. He was like, "What are you doing? You, you don't need that." I'm like, "That's like the top dog." He's like, "You don't even go on your computer." And I'm like, "I oh, know, man. I fucking better get it." And I watched Slimmy doing it on Twitch, man. It looks fucking solid. It, it looks does. really hard to do this fight simulating, man. But right, so you have you went have you went pure big time and bought a pure belt to a computer and all that shit? I just went to this guy that apparently builds computers for flight simulator 
and it's got all the top, all, all singing, all dancing, all the controls, all the rest of it. But um, as soon as I go to it, I was like, what the fuck, man? If you get, if you're going to buy the throttle, the throttle and all that shit, Grado, or... Oh, mate. You mean, like, the kind of yoke, the kind of thing with that? I saw both. You pull back to go up, not up, Paul. Like, troops, man, this is coming out of the games, man. Sorry. Podcast, man, let's move on to Fatball. I'm waiting Dominic Diamond coming on, man. Hi, Dennis Master, can you tell me how to get the fast on Street Fighter 2? Well, it's funny you can say that, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> games Master? What, you never see Games Master, Grey, though? Hey, games Master on Channel Dominic 4. Diamond? Was, was that not the you guy that would like, top celebrity fucking breakdowns and all that? And Dominic Diamond would always have an opinion on it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he was a talking head. He was a talking head on everything, man. Aye. But, I don't, I, right, I don't so, <laughs> Anthony Stokes has left Livingston without playing a game little over three weeks after joining the club. What's going on there? Mate, that guy's... I've spoke to John about this on Celtic Daft, right? That, that guy's a complete and utter fucking head's gone, isn't he? Aye, but aye. Have you, ever, have you ever met anybody that's moved clubs as... And have you ever known anybody that's moved clubs as many times as him and Jim Hamilton? Yeah. I was going to say Jim Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> He's... He's one of the ones, Stokes, he's always kind of been on the edge of being a total tit. But he's been a good player. But I just, I don't know, there's just always been something about him, man. You know what, he's... he's, he's hair transplant? Oh, aye. Very, it's very maybe, maybe it's like the Simpsons, like he got that hair transplant that came from an evil person. And it's <laughs> it's rooted into his brain and he's just turned into a complete oh, crackpot. Oh, 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 they take the follicles at the back of your head, mate. Shrain stuff. Ah, yeah, that's what I say. He's took the hair off an evil person and started <laughs> <and> talking. <laughs> right, troops. Three Hamilton Aki's players who tested positive for COVID-19 on Monday have now returned negative results after NHS screening. It's gone bonkers, aren't yeah. it? Aye. It's... Hamilton Aki's nil, COVID-19. <laughs> I'm even feeling off on that one. Fuck you, you bitch. What did he say? Wait a minute, I take a drink out of my straw. Aye, fucking, you chill out, get yourself a drink, I just, mate. But they still need to self-isolate, didn't they? Yes. Aye, they did, didn't they? Aye. So they're kind of, I don't know, man. They've, but, so they've got, was that a fake positive they got? Uh, False positive. It must have been, mate. It must have been. Like, like Lee Hodgson, Jack Anik. I think it Rangers have known these players have had them and just had it and just fired them out the door. Mm. <laughs> what is, what is, what is, how was the, 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 the goalie last night? He, the heart goalie, did he play for something on last night? Man? Aye, I, I, fucking hell, he had the game his life. Did he? Did he? Aye, yeah, I'm, I'm like Atty John on Celtic Daft, I odds and Edward, never missed a penalty in his career. Fucking curse. He missed a penalty curse. last night? Aye, the dead, somehow that. saved it. I didn't even know that. Aye, there you go. Every day's a school day, grades. <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, we're just going to have to keep playing it by year, week, 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 week. <laughs> mate, do you know that, mate? You didn't say somebody after they do there, mate. That was poor, man. No, you didn't. Uh, no, you did not. Just going to have to keep uh, taking it each week, by week. So I'm, just, I'm just sitting here thinking they're probably going to need to take it week, the week. <laughs> but how did you play last night, Tom? Um... See, they were good last night. Uh, they went down a goal, obviously, pretty early on, two minutes into the game or something like that. Ironically enough, I actually missed it. I missed the goal because I was, uh, I was away doing a, a wee uh, thing. <laughs> but after that, they were, they were brilliant, man. They, they really were. They were excellent. Um, <coughs> there's a, I think they're, I think they're a better side without Charm in the team. Aye. Um, uh, aye, big Duffy. Looks like a threat going forward all the time. He's just up here to get the golden boot, isn't he? Nice, that's what I say. He's been on the half day. He's like, he's going to score about 400 goals this season. Aye. So, you will probably, you speak Livingston at the weekend, you will probably go tap on Saturday. And it's over to us, man, on Sunday. A very, very hard game at Easter Road, man. Mm hmm. That's why. This is, this, is, this is pressure for Rangers. That, well, it's, this is the biggest weekend yet, isn't it, really? Ah, yeah, I would say, I would say, and um, well, I just think, um, I don't think 
we were talking about this on Rangers staff, but we've done well with the old clean sheet record. But I've got a feeling that could be a bit of an issue on Sunday. I see goals in this game on Sunday. Because as we're talking about again in, in Rangers Dark, Hibbs will only sit in. That, that'll, be, that'll be a different game to what we're used to playing this season. So I think it'll be a, it will only be as one side. You know what they've got as well? They've got two right good fucking strikers. Haven't they? Mm-hmm. And they've got Doi, Christian Doi, 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 fucking Kevin Nisbet. Aye. Aye, and um, Dan Boyle's a player too. Aye, definitely is. He's a, he plays in the right, doesn't he? Aye, Martin absolutely. Boyle. Aye, Super. he's... He's good. I, I think Celtic Rangers were actually linked to him. Mm-hmm. Um, the trouble before, will be again, man. It's before he signed, no, he signed a new contract, but Bob, yeah. he, signed, he signed a new deal with Hibs. The Hibs fans were absolutely fucking over the moon because they never thought that, that he would stay. So, yeah. you know, but that's, that's kind of encouraging for me. See yeah. players, players staying at Hibs and not like, taking the money and going down to the lower leagues in England and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like to see that, you know. I think... <sighs> He is a good player, man. It's why the ones Hibs have started really, really well. They have they've started well. But a lot of few guys in my work, Hibs fans are saying they've not actually been playing that well. They're just getting the results. I feel bad, I've man. seen them, they've looked all right. I mean, but we'll see, man. But the SPFL and the Scottish Government are in talks about holding further test events with fans next weekend. We have view to getting supporters into the old firm game in mid October. Uh, fans at Park Heath. So what would so what would it be then? I think because obviously the the, the Tesla games last week it was just the home team fans, yeah. wasn't it? Obviously, I would assume but, it would only be the home team, Gredo. To be honest with you, I don't see if there's going to be fans at the Old Firm game. We'll just be Celtic fans. We'll be no Rangers fans there. Aye, because you can't control who the tickets go to. Oh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, that would that would cause ructions. Imagine the amount of supporters clubs try to get tickets for that, and you know it would be right. fucking bonkers. So I think like me and my mates have thought about like me and my five mates sit together, but it's like after I'm going to do this, God knows the next time me and my mates will be sitting together at the game because I can't see it. You know what I mean? Like like my mates at Tams there, I'm here, Bell, Bert, Marcy. So it's like it's a weird one. Do you know what I mean? But I don't know, man. Just need to wait. There's, there's many important things going on, man, but it's good to get fans back to football. It needs fans. I don't, I don't see it happening this season. Neither do I. I think we're going to end up in our lockdown, to be honest with you. Uh, no, no fuckers gain oh. a fucking... No fuckers gain a fuck about it anymore, isn't it? Nobody's yeah. bothering their ass. It's and gone that way. It's gone that way. It has gone that way. It looks that way, man. And if, it's weird. It's crazy subject, man. It's too depressing, man. I know no. what it is. So, on the show today, we welcome former Hibs captain Rob Jones and it is my turn on the Legends Lottery. Only there's a slight problem, Trips. Well, no problem. Yeah. Issue. There's an issue, right? So, today on the leg- I, I have been summoned by the powers that be at my work at River City. I need to be somewhere today. So, I will possibly not be completing the show. But... I might need to boost, and then when I boost, I will, if it comes to the point where it's a Legends Lottery, you need to do it, I might not be there, but if I've got a legend, I'll say to him to right. come on, I might not have one, you know what I mean? So, he's might need to date with me. Right, cool, that sounds, so you've got a Legends Lottery, and you might not be there, that's cool, mate. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute, hold on a minute here. Right, it's a Legends Lottery, you've got to introduce the guy, for all I know, he might have dialed into Zoom by accident, this guy. <laughs> right? And if you're wanting the point, Stevie, in fact, you know what? No, that that's I, I need to be the bigger man for once in my, my life. And I'll do you know what? That's fine, mate. That's fine because I understand how important that is. I know no, but too, I know what you mean because there is sometimes, right, when, when players come on the legends lottery and I'm like, ah, who the fuck's that? Number one, and then number two, you're like, ah, what am I gonna ask them? I have no <laughs> idea. Do you know what I mean? So if it's somebody that we don't can, you still why, why, right? why don't you tell us? You know, have you got somebody? Definitely. Do you know what? Do you know what? I've got somebody. And do you know what? He's okay in him. And like I said on Rangers Daft, this guy has been in the press recently for very positive reasons regarding Scottish football. Is it David Tennant? No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, but it's not right. 
Okay. <laughs> it's Roy Walker. <laughs> <laughs> right. And on the big question, inspired by Grado's cousin from a couple of weeks ago, we are asking, have you ever been a mascot and do you have a story? But now, let's get to the man whose fingers are so on the pulse, he should have been a doctor. It's Chris Toll <laughs> with his rumour mill. <laughs> Former Scotland midfielder and guest of the show, Charlie Adam, has admitted family reasons were the key for his move to Scottish Championship Dundee on a two-year deal. The former Liverpool and Rangers player told BBC Scotland it's a dream to join the team he supported as a child. He did talk about that when he was on the show, he didn't he? I did, he did. did. And I, I said to him at the time, I said, no chance he's coming back up to Dundee. No, no, no. Away, you fibber. Charlie boy. <laughs> hey, in other Dundee news, funnily enough, they're mulling over a controversial move for former Dundee United striker Nadia Chifchi. Um, right. My God, oh. what happened to that guy? Oh, fucking hell. Do you know what happened to Nadia Chifchi? The same thing that happened to fucking 90% of the players that signed for Celica Rangers for a Scottish club. Disappeared into fucking obscurity. He wasn't good enough for Celic. Scottish Championships are about his level, I'd say. Good luck to you, Nadia. Mate. I don't even remember him signing for Celtic. It was it was a Celtic for four years. Aye, it's been in the World Leagues. Can I? That be why I don't know. I don't have any memory of him playing with Celtic. Did they get a game? Aye, uh, he scored a few goals. A, a couple of goals. He was pish. They get him number seven grade. Don't know. I mean, fucking hell, we saw him. Well, you can't. That's, that's a big tough. That's a tough to take the number seven. So number seven, the root Celtic. They've not had one since that fucking Hardy. Fifty. <laughs> Is he retired? The number Hardy, seven. They have retired it from. <laughs> Oh, that's great, man. The fucking Plus, plus, we, get that many, plus we get that many loan fees for him. They thought, you know, like, get a guy, get a guy, he's doing. They've retired the number seven. Good on them. Right. Uh, Hearts have signed former St. Mum defender Mihai Popescu from Dynamo Bucharest on a two year deal. Popescu will be subject to a 14 day quarantine period after arriving. <coughs> that's going to become the norm, isn't it? Signing players, man, and they come. But they can't play for two weeks Aye, because they need to be like It's like when Jim Farry was in charge of the fucking SFA. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Preston or... See, Grado doesn't get that one. Nah. <laughs> that tickled me, that one. That tickled me. Hey, I was uh, good. Pre- I liked that one. I came in. <laughs> Preston are ready to do a player plus cash deal invo- involving deep deal star Daniel Johnston and Rangers forward Jordan Jones. Rangers are reported to have offered two million plus in Northern Ireland International. Uh, might be a good move. I like Daniel Johnson as a player. Actually, he's he's quite tricky. He's a, he's, he's a talent. He's a good player. Um, St. Johnson. Do you know him keep... watching, watching, do, do you know Phil like watching? Uh, watching the English know? English football, mate. I he's like, I always watch the see the, the <laughs> magazine shows kind of thing where, where you get the highlights like, shot against. It's like do you do you know him for watching? Uh, for watching that. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, oh, Stevie, <laughs> Stevie, I'm just sitting here thinking, does he know him for watching the hang on the hang? Yeah, it's fucking diet, it's fuck me, man. <laughs> yeah, just, he's got 12, 12 goals and 8 assists last season, man, and that's a hard league to get that in, so he must be trying to move on. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> St. Johnson are keen to sign former Aberdeen midfielder Craig Bryson, says manager Callum Davidson. And inspired by Mark Miller's filming of Albion Rovers, Lucasfilm are set to dip their toes into Scottish football as they look to take, a, uh, to take the rights of the championship matches. The Star Wars creators are to, uh, to use the state-of-the-art 3D technology and sound, effect, sound effects to add an R dimension to the likes of Dunfermline versus Morton. Imagine so, you've, you've, maybe, you've maybe not heard much about that, but imagine like when somebody shifts the ball, it makes like a lightsaber noise. <laughs> and when you shoot, when you hit a shot, it goes pew. Brilliant. Magic. Bring it on. I'm all for it. Mate, you're fucking, you're doing the traffic now, right? See if there's crashes on the road, man. Who would they phone? Well, basically, if you ever come across... Um, any road traffic accidents, you f- should phone 0808 17, 17 700 every morning on the Go Radio Breakfast Show. However, if you have been no, involved... No, you start with the police first. <laughs> 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 I 
Gredo. Então, era que eu acho que foi um Gredo. Right, well, aye. As I say, once everything's safe, once everybody's secure, there's no person's trapped, then you can start reporting it to the relevant authorities. If it is your vehicle that has been involved in the road traffic accident, unfortunately, you're going to have to deal with the insurance. And the best place for you to go to to deal with insurance is G4 Claims, because G4 Claims are absolutely bloody fantastic. They sponsor the show. We, th we think they're brilliant. And they make it a lot easier for you. They're going to provide you with complete accident management support that you require. They'll recover their costs from the at-fault party. They're going to sort you out with a like-for-like -like vehicle replacement. They're also going to organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of our approved body shops, and it will be returned back to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they will recover the pre-accident value for your car, write a big fat check, and best of all, it won't cost you a goddamn penny as they charge the at-fault insurance direct. G4 claims don't call call. They don't buy data. And once they've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. Best of all, Nicole and the team over there, they will take your case on unless they think they can help you. So, if you've been involved in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, get on to G4 Claims on 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 172. Get them on the old web at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on the socials, social media, G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims, not at fault claims. Oh, claims. Me easy. Football dafts. Big question. Right, before we get to this week's big question, we need to head back to last week's, where we asked, have you ever been verbally abused by a footballer? We had a last... <laughs> we had a last-minute effort from Peter, who said this. I know it's late for the big question, but my wife and mother-in-law, who is deaf, we are signing to each other at a Motherwell v Dundee United match, calling David Hanna a dirty bastard. As his mum is also deaf, he responded in sign language, agreeing with them. Aha, brilliant. That's brilliant. That's good, that is good, man. And also, on our Patreon-only podcast, Rangers Daft this week, our guest pundit Aaron told us that Gianluigi Buffon gave him the finger at the Rangers v Parma game back in the day, but that doesn't compare to Grado's story about Alan Coombe, which he's desperate to tell. I know for the way you think about it, it's not that good, that story, to be honest with you, you've heard it, you? <laughs> <laughs> it isn't that good, man. Come on, you need to spell just, move up. No, I just, me and my mate Greg, we went to, we were at the beer hall before the game and all that, we got tanked up and we're at the game, and then at half time, we were right down the enclosure, we were row A, and Alan Coombe at half time was either the sub goalie or was the goalie coach, and I was like, there's Alan Coombe, who the fuck's Alan Coombe? Alan Coombe, man, remember Alan Coombe from back in the day? So we just spent the full 50 minutes going, Kim, 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 right? And Alan Kim was fucking raging. He turned around to us and just stared us out. Now that way, when he walked off to got the tunnel, he just pure stared us after to say, You fucking shoot, my name. You fucking shoot. You try to ban me up. Jesus. And that's my story, man. Mate, yeah, I bet you were shaking that yourself. Was that was Gradle's story there. So on to this week's question. <laughs> Do you know what? See halfway through you telling that story. I just remembered you told us it on Rangers Daft. I'm going, oh for fuck's sake, man. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so on to this week's question. <laughs> After Gradle's cousin came on the Legends Lottery to talk about his time as a mascot at Kilmarnock, we thought we'd put it out there to see if anybody else has been a mascot. And have you got a story? Get any stories for you? Oh, told I you my story. I'm, story but I'm not. I'm not fucking telling you. How? Oh. Any time I mention anything about when I was away, and it's oh, oh, the fucking. Hell, <laughs> I that again, man. That that's you must have a good story. Thank you, man. You know the story, right? I was meant to be the mascot for Celtic versus Borussia Dortmund in Germany. Um, <laughs> you know that? Like, go and tell fuck for yourselves. <laughs> Again, it's just, it's no, again, it's not just a, a mask, it's the same thing in fucking Germany. Were they going to fly your team and all that? No, oh, mate, that, was, that was the game that I actually flew over with the team that Paul McStay bought me the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my next it's line, wasn't it? They're going to fly you and let you meet the players and buy you sweeties, not that? Stefan Sharpley, <laughs> Stefan Sharpley sat bought me a Toblerone. <laughs> 
So why did you get why did you get um, dropped? It was fucking, I think it was like insurance or some shit like that. I couldn't get cleared for it. I, I was no longer after more operations. Hey, fuck up, man. Right. Alright, I'm getting on. I, I'm not, I'm not talking to you anymore, sorry, man. Mate. Sorry, mate. I forgot about your operations and that. Sorry, mate. <laughs> you didn't even know about them. You're proud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Callum says my cousin's daughter was a mascot for the Falkirk Cup game. However, she, this is this is along the same lines as my story. My cousin's daughter was a mascot for. What? I don't. I'm not going to tease you, but did they just like that? Because. Come on, that, that is quite bad if you know if you were Roger Duck. No, I didn't know I didn't know I was I didn't know I was gonna be the mascot. My dad never told me it was a surprise. But it get cancelled. What did he tell you when you're fed no, or no, something like that? After after the game, <laughs> what, I'm fucking sick fed up for the sight of you, man. Honest to God. I'm away home. I'm Aye, already, we, luckily, luckily I'm already home. When I sit you down when you're fairy, Chris. I hug me in all that. Aye. Look, this is <laughs> honestly. It's been eating away at me for years. Aye, aye, aye. Get out. Tell me, say, come back at my door. Tell me, listen, Chris, I, I've, I've, no, I've no stopped thinking about this since fucking 1994. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, man. You know the way Paul McStay Paul, 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 taking you in for a bag of seats? I tell you one better than that. You're supposed to be the mascot that night, son. Dad! No! No! <laughs> I had to tell you, Chris. I had to tell you. <laughs> Why could no, you not have just taken it no. with you? Why it was you insurance you? purposes, Christopher. It was insurance purposes. It was not long after the operation. And you've known this whole time. <laughs> That's it. I can't oh, even man. look at you in a new dad. That's just like fucking something. This is like something that would be on River City. I know, mate. I, I'm writing it down, mate. It's going in next week's it, man. Oh. <laughs> Turn around the daylight with the rest of your family. Did you just know about this? <laughs> <laughs> Turn around the cousin you don't like. No, of course you fucking knew, didn't you? Of course you knew. <laughs> it was your fault to get cancelled, wasn't it? Sitting there with a fucking fag up. I know, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you all knew. <laughs> what is it you want me to say that we all knew? <laughs> yes, you know, you stories. Assholes, no, no, mate, it, honestly, it's the fucking it's gold, mate. It's I love gold these gold stories for you in for the clip. It's amazing. I was a mascot, I was a flat now that you can get the flag bearers, aye, bro. Were you? I don't know. Not anymore, you don't. <laughs> aye, no, aye. aye. <laughs> yeah, <yes>. you, <laughs> <laughs> we pure can't take it when he says stuff like that. Come no, I mean, I've, fucking, I've, I've, I've just sat there for five minutes know, taking the filters off, using these candy tape. I know. I know. It's double I know. standards and I feel bad about it. I'm sorry, Tom. No, you're right. But we're, no, we're fine, mate. It's cool, man. As a flag bearer, man, and Barry Ferguson, well, Rangers were playing Falkirk. What age were you? 24. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm no joking. I was, I was like early 20s, I was. It doesn't oh, does 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 go by age, it goes by shirt size. Aye, uh, I, was, I was fucking, I was like, ah, I'll do it. Up hospitality and all that, but out with the flag and all that shit. But when I done it, Scott Arfield played for a Falkirk at the time. I was at that game. Oh yeah. And he I was at that game. I was giving loads of abuse to the, the flag bearers that were going <laughs> in the park. It's a story here. There's no story. It's, story. It's, just, it's just that Scott Arfield ran out and... I was pure cheese of myself, so we were like, oh, look, here's a wee man, how you doing? And I went, all right, mate, Fort in here, and then we signed Scott Arfield. It's up there with the Coombe story, man. <laughs> how did you know you were? <laughs> By the way, that's worse than the Coombe story. But, how did, was, but John, how did, you know you, you were that, how did you know that you were that specific, you were at that specific game? I don't get that. Uh, that was just a game. Scott, Scott Arfield only played a couple of seasons for Falkirk. It was flag day. At Ibrox, and I was I was there for Flag Day Ibrox, and it was it can't even be that many. Flag Day Ibrox. Anyway, I was there for Flag Day Ibrox. If I'd known then, <laughs> if I know now. I'd have fucking hey. bigger pelt or Stephen. Hey, right, let's just move on for this. We're off. Yeah, okay. Right, I, let's but get I've enjoyed to the that. Right. Good, 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 good. has phoned in to say. He's phoned in, has he? <laughs> My cousin's daughter was a mascot for Falkirk game. However, she broke her leg before the game. Rather than cancelling, the club organised for her favourite player, 
Will Vox to carry her out to the centre circle and back again. That is class. That's Tell you what, Stevie, they must have a good insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> that is class. Do you have claims? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. So Scott said that he got to fly the Champions League flag at Celtic versus AC Milan in 2005. What a night I was there that night. I remember you well, Scott. Brendan, are you going on with Brendan? You doing well, Brendan? Well, I mean, what is this a deal with my naughty date now? Sorry, mate. I right. just, just thought you were still dishing out abuse to everybody. Brendan won a competition to be the mascot when Morton played the Kamala in the CIS Cup at Rugby Park in 2009. I was at that game. It had been announced beforehand that Kevin Kell was getting his first call up to the Scotland squad, but wasn't playing for Kelly that night. That night, so he was in the players' lounge before the match, and my dad was up congratulating him on his call up, acting like his pal. That's a beautiful story from Brendan. <laughs> and Murray has got in touch to say I was a mascot once for Queens Park, loved the day, and got to run out next to Grado's pal Ricky Little. Ah, <laughs> that's class. I'm going to tell him he's on this podcast this week. Maybe listen. Craig says I was a mascot at Celtic versus Dunfermline Scottish Cup final in 2007. <coughs> Last out the tunnel was Jim McIntyre. Before the game, I said, all right to Rod Stewart, and he denied me. Crick. <laughs> 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 Greg says I was a mascot for Clyde Bank versus Cowden Beef Ooh, in the 1992-93 season because my pal's dad knew someday. I remember running out for a kickabout with the players before the game. One of them told me to try and scout the linesman with the ball. While he was checking the nets, the ref let me keep the one pound coin for the coin for the coin toss. Happy that, happy with that. My mate's dad said it'd be five nil, and it did end up five nil. I went to the changing room after the game to get my program signed by the players. Saw far too many grown men's willies. I can still smell that smell that I can still smell the rowjets today. <laughs> let me say that last bit there. I can still smell the rowjets today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's welcome to the Football Daft, a man who arrived in Scottish football in 2006 with Hibs. He went on to become a hero at Easter Road after captaining the club to their first bit of silverware in 16 years. He is currently a coach at Middlesbrough. It's Rob Jones. Thanks for joining us, mate. My no, pleasure. Pleasure. How's it going at Middlesbrough? How's things? Okay, well, obviously, with the being locked down, it's been uh, quite a few months since we've, we've been in the building, so uh, I... I hopefully return next week uh, to do a bit with the under 14s. So uh, I enjoy it. It's good. Gets me out of the house. Gets me on the football pitch, which is which is where I want to be. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. And then we're looking just through here, man. So just looking back on your career, mate. You started your career in non-league with the likes of Spennymoor and Gateshead. At that time, you were also working as a teacher. What did you teach? I was. Uh, I worked in a primary school, so I uh, I taught. It was a a mainstream and special needs primary school. So I taught the, the special needs children to swim. Obviously, there's a big high therapy pool there. That was my main job. And then uh, I taught the whole school PE. So I was probably the first uh, school coach, if you'd like, uh, where basically you take the ki- get the kids from the classroom, go and teach them the PE curriculum, give them back, and then you go and do your other job. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing that as, as well as me part-time. Probably. Oh, were you, a sc- were, you a, were you a scary teacher? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no? Uh, I was, oh, I don't know, quite, quite laid back to be honest. Uh, oh, yeah. Every now and again, you you would get one kid who, who was causing chaos, which you you had to deal with. But uh, no, overall, it was a lovely school, lovely, well mannered kids. Would, they, would, would any of them turn up to the games and shout abuse at you or anything like that? No, definitely not. <laughs> no chance, man. It's size in me. <laughs> I just was thinking, I know, <laughs> Rob. Rob, see, he's a, a man like, like my good self that's got a bit of height about him. Um, I'd, <laughs> I would have thought, aye, centre half, definitely. But did you know start your career up front? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the age... It's funny because I, I didn't really... I played football at school, uh, in primary school, but I didn't even really play for a team. Not until I probably got to first year senior school. So it would be year seven. Uh, I was mad into my judo and all that sort of stuff, so that took priority. Uh, and funnily enough, uh, I was supposed to get graded for, for judo because I, I have you get belts, don't you, to the colours and all that sort of stuff. 
so I was, I was due to get graded, but they, we all slept in. So we missed a grading, and then my friend came and picked me up and took me to, to football. Uh, if that hadn't happened, who knows where, where my path would have, would have led. But uh, I got the football book, and, and that, that was it, really. Uh, but yeah, I was a footballer. I played centre forward from the age of probably 10, 10, 11 to 15 when I left York City. Um, it's not um, totally worked under Calton Palmer. I just want to know, Rob, who's taller, you or Calton Palmer? Or me all day. <laughs> Calton Palmer's a, a wee bit of a personal hero of mine. I'm a, I'm a Leeds fan. So, obviously, Leeds and Calton Palmer go hand in hand. What was he like to work under? Well, Calton was great. Uh, and I'll, I'll forever be indebted to Calton because he was the one that gave me my, my chance. Uh, he, he never watched me play. Uh, it was a guy called John Hollins who used to play for Chelsea. Uh, he was the one that came up and watched me when I was playing for Gateshead. And uh, I, I signed the next day. So, uh, forever indebted to the man. He was, he was brilliant for me. Uh, he's, his tenure at the club didn't last as long as he would have liked. But uh, that was my, my start in football. And uh, you know, it, was, it, was, it was a great club. He was a great individual, a great coach. Uh, and I would have liked to have worked with him a lot longer than what I did. But unfortunately, that's where football goes. So you, you got a move to Grimsby, is that right? Yeah, uh, Sammy McElroy came in at Stockport and uh, I knew quite quickly I wasn't his cup of tea. Uh, he wanted to sign somebody else and give him my money, so uh, he told me that I could, I could leave. Uh, at that point, I could, go, I could have gone back to Accrington Stanley, but I'd only just come out with a part-time football. I didn't want to go back into it. So I, went, I got the opportunity to go to Grimsby with Russell Slade and I had two years there. First year wasn't great, full of injuries. Uh, it was difficult, really difficult. But the second year went like a dream, and then obviously at the end of it, uh, we the, the, the Hibs, Hibs bought me for a good amount of money, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. Did you know much about like, Hibs and Scottish football in general, Rob? When they came, not not as much as what obviously what I know now. Uh, right. But I, I knew about the, the the big five six clubs up in Scotland. Obviously, it's on TV, it's on TV and all that sort of stuff. So you knew. You knew who it were, you knew where they were, and you, but you didn't really, you don't really get to know, understand the club until you actually step foot in it. It's, right. it's difficult. If you're not a fan, then you don't understand the football club. Uh, but once you step foot in the, in the building, then you realise how big the club actually is. I remember uh, the taxi uh, parking up at the main reception when I went in to meet Tony. And it's just the, the main building, it just, it overawes you, but it's enormous. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was just the feeling going in was, was something special. Right. It's funny, like you're saying, um, you, if you don't know about Scottish football, then you don't realise how big it is. Did you like go back and tell people down south, like, oh, honestly, you have no idea. It's actually like there's Hibs, there's Hearts, there's not just Rangers and Celtic, there's a big. Did you, did you defend the Scottish game a wee bit once you come up here? I think it, it's not so much you defend it, I think you have to educate people more about it. Uh, English football is English football and that will be the way it is forever and a day uh, but uh, Scottish football is a bit of a different identity to, to English football and you like I said before you've got to be in it to understand it and it's a, it's a great a great setting to play football uh, it's a great standard some great football clubs some great footballers by the way uh, and it's yeah it's about educating them and there's players that I've played with down south who have gone up up into Scotland. Gary Hooper, uh, I played with him at Scunthorpe. Uh, I was one who, who spoke to him about it. He used to pick my brains about the Scottish football and, and Celtic and whatnot. And he did very well in his time up, up, up the road. And there's been a few more. So uh, I will always sing very highly of, of Scottish football. Right. <clears throat> no, that's it's brilliant. It's, uh, sorry, Stephen, that is brilliant because you do get a lot of like, English pundits and stuff like that. And more, most recently, uh, Gary Breen. Um, talking about how um, Shane Duffy's fucked up his career by coming to Celtic. These people have never set foot in Scottish football, you know what I mean? And they've, they've, they don't, they shouldn't have the opinion that they have of it because, like, like we said there a minute ago, they don't actually really know what they're talking about. You know, Scottish football is blood and thunder, a hundred miles an hour. There's a lot of players, good players, down in England that have come up to Scotland and haven't been able to cut the mustard. You know, no. so. Yeah. It's the, the sooner that people get more educated, like you said, Rob, um, definitely the better, in my opinion. Well, the Scottish football, that put me on the map. 
my name became a household name because of Hibs. Mm -hmm. simple as that. And I'll be forever indebted to that. Uh, if I had to come up, up to Scotland, who knows what would have happened? You don't, you, you don't know, you haven't got a crystal ball. So uh, it's important that you, you live in the here and now and uh, you, you take stock of where you've been and what you've done. Do you still keep track of hips and stuff? Do you still keep an eye always. on the results and stuff, Rob? Always, always. Had a good uh, start to the season, eh? Yeah, I was up uh, two weeks ago for the Aberdeen game. I did the... the Half-time draw? Half-time draw? <laughs> I did the... Aussie oh, punters! <laughs> <laughs> only, sell, only sell 12 tickets and it's the other away players. <laughs> uh, I, did, uh, I did Hibs TV, so it was good. But uh, I try and get up four or five times a year. Uh, but Because oh. it's, it's a club that's, that's, that's really close to me, so... I, oh, so you know, the fan, you're obviously a bit of a cult hero with the fans as well. But, but huge, you're not a cult hero, a, a huge hero for the Hibs fans as well. Um, because when you come up here, the first season, man, you scored in the cup final, didn't you? And helped them lift the League Cup. So, it's you know, they're always going to uh, welcome you with open arms, I would think. Yeah, it's, I have a, a really good relationship with supporters. Uh, even when I left, I left for footballing reasons and, and that was that was it. Uh, but uh, no, they, whenever I come back up, it's a very warm reception. Uh, it's nice to come back to, to people that uh, that really get you and understand you and, and, and know why you do the things you do. So, right. was, so was it's funny because you were on you were on. On you go, Grado. I was just going to say he's didn't have CV with the the, the former presenter of football daft. Would I be right? Were you didn't didn't have CV with, with David Tanner, big man? Yes, I was, yeah. yeah. Right. How's he getting on? I good guy. <laughs> he's good guy. He's all right. Yeah. Is he talking about me now? Uh, not this time. Maybe next time. <laughs> Rob, Rob, sorry to interrupt again, right? but there's, there's something I've always wanted to ask you. Right? Um, see when John Collins came in, there's a rumour that he walked into the, the, train, uh, the dressing room, whipped his top off and says, this is what I expect for you. Is that true or is it a lot of shite? Well, if you're asking me, it's a lot of shite because if, if, if he did, it, I wasn't in the room. So, Right, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was your relationship like with John Collins then? It was fine. Uh, I think, looking at it from the outside in, uh, there was a lot of players, I think, still pining for Tony. Because mm -hmm. Tony, Tony was brilliant. And I, I only had him for three, three and a half months. He's probably one of the best minds I've ever had. And that's, yeah. that, that means something, uh, the fact that you, you didn't really get to know him as well as you, you would like. Uh, but it was, he just had an air about him, Tony. Uh, and when he walked in a room, everybody stopped and listened and took note, took note and acknowledged the guy. Uh, I think it was tough for John when he first came in because the young boys had been with Tony now for probably two years and, uh, and Tony had guided them through and helped them. Uh, Tony never shouted, uh, never raised his voice. It was always in a, a, a mild mannered way, and that's how he got across to the boys. So I think some of them were were pining for him a little bit. By a culture shock, going from Tony Mowbray to John Collins, I take it then two completely different characters. Eh? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I think some of the young boys had never been told what to do before. If you know what I'm saying, mm. uh, it was always like uh, almost like a night and day situation. So I took took some of them a little while to get used to it. Mm. What was his training like? What was on the training field? What was he like, John Collins? Was he was he quite demanding? Our oh, training was good. Training was good. Uh, but end of the day, you're, you're out on the pitch playing football and get paid for it. It should, should it should be irrelevant who's coaching you. Uh, you should want to do it as much as you can, but as, as often as you can. Uh, but training was good. Uh, him, uh, he, he sometimes he joined in. Sometimes he'd stand and watch from the side, but no, training was good. It was always at a high tempo. He'd always felt it felt tired at the end of it. Uh, and to be fair, the, the football we played from from the time he came in was was a bit more uh, total football. So uh, we all had to change, especially me. I wasn't really a, fo a footballer with the the ball at my feet. I had to develop into a, a, a some sort of player who's comfortable with ball, ball at his feet and, and start and tax off. So it was a change for everybody, really. All right. So I mean that that that, that that was a really good hips team um, that you played with, um, your Scott Browns, your Kevin Thompsons, Whitekers, and you, you you went on about Fletcher there just for the stuff for the for the Patreon. Um, obviously, you said you need to be in Scottish football to, to to understand it, but were you really surprised at the standard of these players at Hibs? 
Well, I'd, when I came in, I'd only had uh, 10 days off because I played in the playoff final for Grimsby against Cheltenham uh, 10 days before. So uh, it was quite a whirlwind and quick for me. And it was quite quick to get to, to actually get to understand the, not just Scottish football, but Scottish players themselves. And I remember the, the first training session because we were, we were in Europe that year. So it was, it was quite a quick turnaround for me. And I was taken quite, quite taken aback by the, the standard of, of individuals. Uh, when I did come up, you've got uh, uh, David Murphy, who went to Birmingham. Uh, mm-hmm. Whitaker, who, who, who departed. Uh, Chris Kiln up top with, with Fletch. You had Guillaume Boozlin, who's got the best first touch I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, Scott Brown, Kevin Thompson. So you looked at it from that point of view, you're thinking, you're thinking wow, I like I alluded to earlier, there was lots of very, very young football, young good footballers with uh, with abundance of talent. See when you see when you were on training, you played fives. Did you ever have to play against Benji? Because oh, that guy, uh, that well, guy was a box of tricks, wasn't he, man? Ben, Benji was was a good kid, good kid. But uh, if you if you walloped him, he he disappeared. So that was always my motto: kick him <laughs> and he would disappear. <laughs> So after John Collins departs, Rob, big one of our former guests within the show, big Mixu, he comes in. What was he like to work under? Uh, Mixu was great. Uh, Mixu and uh, Donald Park. Uh, I haven't spoke to Mixu for a while, but I speak to Donald Park quite often. Donald's quite my a little bit my mentor from my coaching pathway. Uh, so whenever I do my badges, I come up to Scotland. Obviously, Donald's left the Scottish FA, uh, Scottish education now, but when I came up, he was he was brilliant for me, and he's always at the end of the phone. Uh, but they were both great. Uh, Mixu was Mixu. Uh, you knew when you were on the wrong side of him and you tried not to do that. But uh, <laughs> no, he, he was... But that says a lot. A guy your size being a wee bit fear of Mixu, he did come across as if he would batter fuck out you when he was on the show earlier on. No, Mixu, Mixu was a good guy. A good guy. And again, he, he got the club, if you know what I'm saying. We're talking about people who've, who've been in Scottish football and people who haven't, but he, he understood the club and he understood what the club wanted and where he wanted to go and how he wanted to play and, and what the fans wanted and all that sort of stuff. So uh, he was on. He, he knew what he needed to do quite early on. Uh, but no, he was, he was very straightforward. He knew what he wanted. Uh, Donald Park was great for him. He was great for us as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a group and as a unit. Uh, and, and, we, and we did all right, I think. Uh, I think if we had a t- time again, we may have changed a few things, but uh, you, you, you can't affect the past, you know, only influence the future. Was it, was it frustrating for you, mate? You know, you were talking about Stephen Whitaker left, but also you, you had Brown and Kellen and, and Kevin Thompson. Was that frustrating? A lot of the times when Habs players would go to, uh, would leave the team? No, I think it's a, it was more of a, an inevitable because... They were, they were that good, uh, and if it had gone sideways, then it may well have become, become a, a frustration on my point of view because you, you think, well, why, why is he going there when this club's better than what the one he's going to? Uh, but they went for a, an awful lot of money as a group, uh, and uh, I think Scott, Scott Brown's fee he, he paid for the training ground. So uh, <laughs> you look at it from that point of view, the club still has to has to earn revenue and and and, and uh, box that way, but no, you you never begrudge a player for for moving on to passage new as long as those passage news new are, are up up the ladder rather than down. So tell me this one then, right, Stephen and Gredo, you can close your ears for this one if you want, right? Uh, so we're at Easter Road and Rangers are beating Hibs, and the Rangers fans start singing, "We're going to sign Scott Brown." Now all the Hibs players must have thought. No, he's fucking am me because we know exactly where Scott Brown is going. So what what was it? What was the chat like after that? Uh, I think a few of them took the piss out of him, to be honest, because <laughs> I think we, like you said, we all knew he wasn't going to Rangers. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know that. I knew. I knew he wasn't going to Rangers. Mm. Uh, I think uh, conversations had been had and questions had been answered with regard to what what Scott Brown was doing. Obviously, remember that Scott Brown nearly went in just in January window, uh, and he stayed until the end of the cup final. Uh, but no, I, I knew Scott was going to go to Celtic. Uh, I know uh, not, Newcastle came in the last minute, didn't they? With a with a outrageous bid at the, at the back end. I think he'd only been he'd been at Celtic a week and range, uh, Newcastle offered double his money, I think, uh, to to go there. But no, I, I think that it was all done and dusted quite early. 
Wait, did Newcastle come in for Scott Brown after they had signed for Celtic? Yes, they did, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. No, yeah. I didn't know that. I, here we go. A breaking exclusive <laughs> for football daft. <laughs> right, so yeah. tell, me, tell me this one then. How much of a nightmare was it playing in front of Big Eve McAlambie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he was, he was, to be fair, he was nearly as tall as me, wasn't he? he was, I think he was, he was massive, bit, man. That'll, that'll be why the ball went through his legs so often. <laughs> he, was a bit, he was a bit wider than me. Uh, but I think it was tough for him. He was a, a young kid coming up uh, from London. Uh, he, I think he, he's, all his family and friends were in London. And he was quite close to them. So it was quite difficult for him, I think, to start with uh, coming up and then this, this expectation because. Ever since I, I came up, there was always grumblings about the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper does this, the goalkeeper does that. What about this one? What about that one? So there was always uh, always grumblings about that side of it. But to be fair, he had his good days. He had his, his, his indifferent days. Uh, I don't know where he is now, to be honest. But uh, no, he was a nice kid, but just young. Young, really. At the end of that season, Rob, you were linked to a move to Leeds. And reports say you were raging, Hibs turned it down. How close did that move actually come to happen? No, not, not so close. Uh, I think there was discussion uh, at that point between my agent and uh, I think it was Dennis Wise at the time, who was Leeds manager. Uh, I don't think it really got off the ground, to be honest. And the fact that people were saying I was raging, what could I be raging about? There was nothing to be raging about, to be honest. There was nothing concrete. A, a bid hadn't gone into Leeds to, from Leeds to, to Hibs to say we wanted to display. It hadn't gone in. It went, didn't even get that far. Uh, I think it was a conversation between, obviously, Dennis Wise and my agent at the time, and and that's as far as it got because they never, it never really got off the ground. So, for people to say that I was raging about not being able to go was so far off the mark because it didn't really get off the mark. Aye, aye. It was on that talk of you um, moving to a couple of other clubs. I think uh, when you moved on to Scunthorpe, you had there was the option for Nottingham Forest and. Yeah. I think I think it was Derby was the other one. I'm not. I'm, don't quote me on that. But um, was was that how hard was it to choose between those two teams? And was it as hard as when you had to play against Messi? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was. It, well, the, the window opened. Well, just no, just before the window opened, it was Colchester and Paul Lambert. Uh, I think he'd offered a hundred grand and he got thrown out the door. No chance. Uh, they wanted that, that might have been a blessing in disguise though because Lambert moved on yeah. pretty quickly after that you know yeah, so he went, he went to Norwich after that didn't he so uh, yeah it was a difficult one but you know the, the Nottingham Forest one was, was was close a lot closer than, than most and I'm being brutally honest I would like to like to have gone to Nottingham Forest at, at that point uh, they were struggling in uh, the championship that, at, the, at that time and they needed the centre half uh, Billy Davies was the manager so obviously he knew, he knew Scottish football really well but again, they, they didn't come to a, an agreement with the two clubs and uh, the chairman and, and uh, Mick Sue said no, not for sale right now. And uh, the discussions were had uh, closer towards the summer. Just to uh, let you know, um, Michael Lambie played with Wickham up until last year, mate. Oh, did he? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> appearances. Tell us, tell us about um, the game against Barcelona at Murrayfield then. How was... Did you get any shot at the end of the game? I took the... I, I don't do shirts. Never have. Uh, I can't imagine you doing that. No. Aye. Uh, too, too, I, but I took... Aye. My two little boys, uh, they wanted one. So I, I took... Uh, I think he was bought called Caceres or something. He signed for Southampton two years ago, centre half. I never heard of him. Oh, I, <laughs> it was just a memento for, for my little boys. They've got it up. Uh, it's, it's been framed wow. and it's up in one of the rooms. Uh, but That's class. No, it was, it was a more of a surreal game, to be honest. Uh, you, you start off the game with uh, Henri and Messi to deal with. Uh, then Henri goes off and you get Samuel Eto'o. And <laughs> then he moves out wide and the young boy Bojan came on. Uh, right. So you look around and say, "When am I? When are you ever going to leave me alone?" And it's, <laughs> it's impossible. No, it was sensational. What a what a, an, an occasion to be involved in. Uh, not many people can sit there and say he played against Lionel Messi. So right. yeah, did right. he score that day? Who Messi? Aye. Messi got hat trick. All right then. Oh. <laughs> so my next my next point was going to be 
well, not many people can say that they played against Messi and kept a clean sheet, but a hat trick's nearly as good, isn't it? No, nearly as good. <laughs> three, three carbon copy goals he scored. Put in from the, the, the right hand side, whipped it in top bins next time. It was against uh, Paul Hanlon, was making one of his debuts. Paul Hanlon, was he? And oh, yeah. he had Lionel Messi. Oh, imagine that, right, man, you're going to make your debut, right? Who'll be playing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm no well. I, I can't come in today. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Derek Riordan rejoined the club. Um, we've we've spoke about Derek Riordan on on this show before. Um, or a talent, or a talent that you could you could hope for in a footballer. Pure natural talent. Bit of your head's gone. Um, so what what was he? What did you what did you make of Riordan? How talented was he? Well, he he left the first time just before I signed. Uh, so I, I think he moved across to, to Celtic in 2006. I think it was a week before I signed. Uh, so I never got to know him from the, the first time round. Uh, but then when he came back, I got along with him really well. Good guy. Uh, real hips fanatic. Uh, really wanted to do well. Obviously, he, he'd gone and he'd made some money at Celtic. But that, he was just a down-to-earth guy. And people say they're the head, headstrong lunatic. But I never come, he never come across like that to me. Uh, we we got along really well. Uh, we still get along really well. He's doing a little bit now. I think he's doing a little bit age two work or something for someone or his, his own company. I bumped into him two years ago when we did a charity event up at Hibs, and you know he's great. We get along really well, and uh, I think a lot of the, the the stuff that's put out there about, about him is it, it, so far from the truth. It's it's unnecessary at times, uh, but he's I got along. I thought he was a great guy. Right. So Some much point. talent, man. Unbelievable ability on the ball, man. He was like... Honestly. You must, you must have seen it still a lot too. You know what I mean? Aye. Every, every time he came on, you felt as if he was going to score a goal. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I think it was just a clash of personalities between himself and Gordon Strachan. Probably along the same lines as, as a few of the players and John Collins. Uh, like, uh, and, like, and, like, and like Griffiths yeah. as well. Aye. But um, like, like I said, a, a phenomenally talented footballer. Just didn't seem to click. I don't know what it was, man. It, I, well, Stratton's got a few things to answer for right enough. But <laughs> maybe, maybe Derek would probably uh, cater for for this this type of manager now because they're all man managers now, aren't they? Mm. Aye, aye, aye. You do it my way, no way. It's because I think Derek doesn't doesn't go down them lines. Uh, the man managers, like Sir Tony Mowbray at the time, who was a fantastic man manager. Uh, that they would probably that kind of mould would get the probably the best out of them. So you're kind of you're coaching the Middlesbrough. Rob. Have you ever like thought about getting into management up here? Have you ever applied for any jobs up in Scotland? Because you know the Scottish game obviously have been up here. Well, I, I did the when I when I went to Doncaster, I got the player manager role, and we we actually won League One on the final day, uh, in, the, in the last minute, <laughs> promoted the championship. So I've done the management side of it, uh, which is great, and it's what I, I want at that present moment in time. It's what I wanted to do. Right now, do I want to become a manager? I don't know. Do I want to coach? Most definitely. Aye. Uh, I've said it many times. I coach not because Rob Jones wants a coach. I coach because I want to pass on my knowledge and influence to other people. Uh, and I want other footballers that I coach to have the possibility and the opportunity to have what I had. Because I, I had the best job in the world. There's Aye. no question about it. It, was, it is the best job in the world. You get paid very handsomely for it. Uh, but I also hold my hands up and say, I would have, I would have been up for free because it's just ingrained in you that's what every young boy wants to do so uh, for me if I can influence a group a club an individual uh, that's that's all that, that matters to me uh, whether it's uh, at the moment I'm with the Mills under 14s uh, I'd love to go 18s 23s first team at some mm-hmm. point I would love to but that's in the in the in the, in the future and who knows what's on the corner in football it changes every day so for me to say, right, I want to be a manager, I want to do this, is pigeonholing myself. So I'm open to anything, uh, as long as I think I can go in and be a positive influence on the club, on the surroundings and the individuals, then yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, and if someone feels that, that I can come and do a, a job for them, then, then great. You come across as a, 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 a bit of a intelligent fella. Yeah, okay. I was legitimately about <laughs> to say the exact same thing there. Oh, I I, I, he's he's up, speaking really well. Aye, ah, like I can imagine you know stunning for any shit in the dressing room. If anybody starts any carry on, I can imagine you being like, "Oh, we've got the best fucking job in the world here. Get your act together. Get your shit 
Take that off. No. Well, you, you look at the facade of the, the bald head and the, the, the nose that's splattered all over my face and the fact that I'm six foot seven and, that, and I shout. Uh, that, is a, that is a perception that probably helped me in my playing times. But probably <laughs> maybe a, a, a difficult one when I'm, I'm in the coaching sur- surroundings. But no, uh, like most people, I had that switch. And right. unfortunately, that, that fuse is very short. Uh, <laughs> it's the same not, as me. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's very short. And uh, I know what I want. And if I see that things aren't done, being done properly, then I uh, air my views. And sometimes that makes me pin people up. That Sometimes it makes me have a scuffle, have an argument. I don't oh, care. Yeah. Uh, I know what I want and, and hopefully I, I know how to get it and the right way of, of getting it and the right way of moving around it. But uh, if someone's standing away, then you're in trouble. So what you're trying to tell me is, <laughs> what you're trying to tell me here is, thank fuck you never managed Derek Riordan. <laughs> no, I, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have loved to manage Derek, Derek. Like I said earlier, we, we got along really well. Uh, yeah. And No, he's, he's, he's one of those footballers. I came across a boy uh, when I was in the 23s at Doncaster called uh, Liam Mandeville, who was at Chesterfield at the moment. And he's from my, my neck of the woods. And he's a player uh, that you just don't coach. You just let him go and play. Mm-hmm. And that's in the same mould as Derek. Because Derek yeah. just wanted to play. Just wanted to go and score goals. Just wanted to run around. Uh, was delighted to be there. Uh, and when you put uh, limits on these people, it takes away their, their individual qualities and, and special talents that they have. Right. So for me, Derek was in the same mode as the man and just let him play. Go, let him go and cause chaos. So as I said earlier, you, you speak really well and you mentioned that you'd been working for Hibs TV. So if the coaching thing doesn't doesn't work out for you, then there might be a future in, uh, in punditry. But I take it you've watched a lot of Hibs this season. What do you th- how do you think they're doing under Jack Ross? Personally, I think that they're, they're having a great season so far. They've started really well. It was a disappointing game against Aberdeen. Uh, they just they just couldn't break them down in the second half. It was it was tough for them. And Aberdeen, you've got to you've got to doth your cap to them because they've been there, done it before. They went one 0 up away from home, and they just <laughs> shut up shop and said, well, basically, go on and break us down. And Hibs that on on that day just couldn't do it. Uh, but then they bounced back really well against St Mirren last week, uh, and then they've obviously got Rangers this weekend, which is going to be a toughie. But no. Yeah, I think if you'd have, t- you'd have said, uh, what was it, it's five weeks, five wins, one draw, one loss uh, from mm-hmm. the first seven games, you'd have taken that with both hands without, without a shadow of a doubt, sitting second in the table. Uh, what we don't want is a, another season from like last year. Uh, so the, the longer you can stay up as high as possible, the, the, the better for the football club. And no, he, he, he's, he's got a plan, some really good players there, really good players. Back four is really strong and solid. The keeper looks really good. Uh, Big Marciano, so uh, no, it, it's it, it was it was good. It impressed me on that on that day. Other than the, the result, we were talking about that earlier, weren't we, Stephen? We were saying we were saying how the the Hibs front line could really cause Rangers problems this weekend. Um, Dodge and Nesbitt, great players. The point Nesbitt, he was in the studio with me because he was injured. Uh, but I've seen him. He scored again the other night when he on when he when he came back. So he said he came across as a as a kid who was just desperate to play and desperate to do well. Uh, and those ingredients when you when you're a footballer are vital. Definitely, man. Brilliant, Rob. Mm-hmm. Well, Rob, every week on this show we do a ninety second football daft quiz. You up for it? It's nothing like your first quiz, is it? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no mate it's not that mate we always do it right so we always put our guest football knowledge to the test we are 90 second football quiz and we've got a new leader as John Sutton scored 15 he's top of the league at the moment and we've got Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley tucked in behind with 14 we've a good doctor Kenny Joker and Kevin Harper just behind with 13 we've also got fellow hippies Ian Murray there as well he's on 7 and your old gaffer Mixu Patalainen's on 3 with Falkirk manager David McCracken still at the bottom with one. Is there anybody on that list you want to beat, Rob? Just get me above Ned. That'll, that'll do me. That'll do me. <laughs> cool, cool. Right, so we've got 90 seconds on the clock. You can't pass. You must give an answer. You ready, producer John, with the time? Yeah, right. Your time starts now, Rob. Who currently manages Airdrie? 
Uh, makes a part then. Which keeper did St Mirren sign on an emergency loan from Hearts? Uh, Zahal or Zamal or something like he's called. Who do Hibs face this weekend? Rangers. How many goals did you score for Hibs? 14, I think it was. What Scottish club has Charlie Adam just signed for? Dundee. Who plays their home games at Galabank? Oh, St Mirren. David Irons is the current manager at what club? Airdrie. What town do East Fife play in? Sterling. In what year were you voted Doncaster Player of the Year? <laughs> 2012. Who did Chelsea sign Kai Havertz from? Uh, by Leverkusen. Scott Booth is the manager of what women's team? Hearts. What team are nicknamed the Spiders? Livingston. In what minute did you score your League Cup final goal? 26. What Scottish team have had three players test positive for Covid? Oh, uh, St. Mary. Time! Oh, I started the question, so I'll finish, John. Gareth Bale is close to signing for which Premiership club? Tottenham. There we go. Some dodgy questions in there <laughs> for John. I know, I know. John. John, the answer that you've got there for that COVID one. St Mirren did have three players tested positive as well, didn't they? Aye. They did. They did. Do you know what? I'll give you that then. I'll give you that. <laughs> Hamilton, was, Hamilton was the answer we were looking for. I should have uh, clarified that a bit more because the whole St. Mun squad was basically tested positive. Um, but uh, we'll go through the wrong answers, uh, Rob. Um, she had old Muckery and Murray, who's manager at Airdrie at the moment. Ah. Uh, you apparently scored uh, 12 goals for Hibs. Is that right or wrong? Because we That's asked wrong. This That's wrong. That's, That's wrong. So 40. If you go that off Wikipedia, John, Wikipedia. sometimes they don't put the, the, the like goals. friendlies and all that in it. They kind of yeah. don't take that into consideration, don't they? And they only, they only count league goals, they don't count cup right. goals. Right, we'll, we'll add that to the points then. Uh, Gala Bank is a home to Anath, Anath Athletic. Um, we've got our standard Stennis Muir question in there. So Davey Adams is the current manager of <laughs> Stennis Muir. Uh, East Fife playing Metal. Doncaster Player of the Year 2013, Rob. It was 2012-2013 season. Oh, come on, it's the same thing. Ah, ah it's the same thing. Ah, you've got to give ah, that one, John. Nah. The question is in what year? It wasn't 2012 the year. But you, but you, but you, which season did you did you win the league? You wouldn't say 2013, you'd say 2012-2013. That's right. right. He's, he's, right. John. he's six foot seven, I'm not arguing, it's another point for Rob <laughs> 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 Scott Booth, the manager of uh, Glasgow City. The Spiders are called, uh, it's Queen's Park. He scored your League Cup final goal in the 28th minute. No, the no, didn't go in the 28th minute. According to the BBC Sports, it was the 28th minute. Rubbish, 26th it was. <laughs> right, okay, that's another point for Rob. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, we've got to draw the line somewhere. Somebody's going to come on and just say, no, every question I gave you was right. You are oh, six it, foot seven centre it, half. Oh, hey, listen, I'd, ar one. I'd argue, I'd argue with old Nick, mate. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm giving the point to Rob. Um, okay, okay. Right, uh, with a, we'll put an asterisk next to the, the score because he's hard and we'll write hard as fuck. Um, <laughs> so we're going to give you nine points, Rob. Nine yes, points. That's good, mate. I'll take that. Well, nine points, no bad at all. John, what height are you? Six two. Come on, John. I mean, it's not me and fucking Tolkien shit ourselves for Rob. No, I mean, because we've got, we got a wrestler on the program as well. I mean, I wouldn't fuck with him. Right, there you are. <laughs> Rob, thanks very much for taking time to come on and join us, mate. It's been great chatting to you. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Rob. Cheers, Cheers for Rob. On. Thanks very much, mate. It's once again time to try a giveaway. Some beer 52, and we have two cases up for grabs this week on the Pro Set Playoff. In front of me, I have the 91 92 season Pro Set cards, um, and we get a contestant on to play one of the boys to see if they can guess the player before them. And this week, we welcome Shire supporter John Conlon. How are you doing, John? 
Hello, lads. Good, good. How you doing, John? Welcome, my man. Thanks for coming on. Oh, oh the shiny pie, the shiny pie, the na 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 na. The shiny pie, the shiny pie, the na 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 na. How many teams do you support, to? I, <laughs> I, I support whoever my my pals play for in Celtic. And my yeah. mate played. My mate played Maybe, for the Shire for years. Maybe cousin played for the Stirling and all, mate. Hey, who's that? Squib, Mark McKenzie. Mark McKenzie, aye. Aye, he played for you, mate. He's do, you Gra- do you remember Graham McGee, big centre half? <laughs> aye. Is that your neighbour as well? That's my pal. <laughs> That's my pal. <laughs> we had a good result on Tuesday there. We pumped Falkirk on Tuesday. John. Oh, hey, hey, John. Oh. Oh. Yes, oh. we won't talk. It was a, it's a pre-season friendly. These are meaningless things anyway. We'll oh, go to about that. Fucking pre-season friendly in September. What is the worst? Who's, who's the best player to play for East Stirlingshire in its history? Oh. Big Hizzy. Yeah. Hizzy knew where the goals were. had a goal there yeah. for Wales back in the 60s. It was a Welsh cap for 50s, I think. But I can't remember. Evil Southall. I don't think it was him. <laughs> We've not had many good Man, players. Your, We've been pretty shit. Who's your favourite? Them. My favourite, oh, Michael Gerrity. He was a he was a fan's favourite back in the nineties. Michael Gerrity. Oh, hi. So, John, we'll get cracking on with the quiz. The rules are really simple. I'm going to read a description from the 91-92 Pro Set playoff cards. Um, you've got to buzz in the first. The person that buzzes in first gets the answer. But you can only, once you buzz in, you can't continue in the game. So. First to two, um, and if none of you buzz in, I'll flip over the card so you can see the player and get try and guess who it is, right? Um, but first of all, we need to hear your buzzer, John. What's it going to be? Uh, 180. Right, okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to draw it. Is anybody you would like to play, John, in particular? Hey, those are I don't. No, I, know, I know I'm on form, man, but you're sitting there talking about fucking goalies for the 60s and all that. Where was cap goalies? So you can, I've got a feeling you're going to be good at this, mate. Right, well, okay, we'll do the draw, and the name we've drawn out today is Steven. Yay! Oh, the off. Yeah. Yeah. Sub- yeah. yeah. you've got to put my name in that fucking hat, John? <laughs> <laughs> you're desperate to play Chris, aren't you? Um, um, I need to redeem myself after getting my arse scalped off that last guy. Yeah, uh, Stephen, what's your buzzer going to be? Pedro Mendes! Right, okay then. <laughs> Right, here we go then. First card coming out, and this player is a Celtic goalkeeper. He's been first choice goalkeeper for Celtic Park for 12 seasons. Join them. Pedro Mendes! No, John was in first. John. Uh, Sorry, what was that? Pat Bonner. Pat Bonner. 1 0, John. That was an easy one, that one. That was an easy one, that one. I I fucking. I buzzed. Fucking the Shire were in before me. Right, here we go then. <laughs> Next player. The Shire. He's got a name, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Next, <laughs> Next player up. This player is one of the most exciting talents in Scottish football and is now in his second spell at Tyne Castle. After six seasons as a regular selection, he moved to Newcastle for 750000 in 19... 19- John, we in there? John Robertson. John Robertson. Correct answer. Oh, 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 oh. Two 0 white water Well played, John. Well played, mate. Oh, thank you. Where'd you that bullet land? Yeah. <laughs> you are absolute dog shit at this, man. I'm the best on this. <laughs> You're a fucking redneck at this game, that's man. My, that's my I've first loss. Give me a break. I thought that's my first loss. I take the week off, man, and he's got pumped, man. <laughs> <laughs> John, well played, mate. Honestly, well. Well played. done, John, my man. Right, if I'm running the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I get in there, biggie. Thanks for lost the show, bud, and thanks for coming on, mate. I appreciate it. There you go, John. Two crates of beer heading your way. Uh, and remember, if you want to play like John, get onto our Twitter at Football Daft Pod. You have to be over 18 and stay in the UK. And remember, you can get a crate of beer 52 for just the price of the postage and packaging. They'll send you beers from across the world from lots of small batch breweries. So you can get that right now at beer52.com forward slash daft beer52.com forward slash daft. Just pay 4 95 for the postage and packaging and you'll get a carry out for the weekend. So there you have it. And if you want to get on next week, get on the socials. The Legends Lottery on Football Daft. 
Let's take a delve into the pick and mix of Scottish football and see if we can pull out a fizzy cola bottle. As once again, it's time for our Legends Lottery. Each week, one of the team is tasked with finding a former hero, getting him on his show. Then you rate how good they were out of five. Stephen leads with 19.3. Chris is second on 13.9. Well, I'm at the back of the game on 12.5. But before we find out who is on this week, let's, of course, find out Chris's score for last week. So we had uh, Michael Gardine on last week. Bit of a short interview because you had to go elsewhere. We'll get him on again, uh, but that kind of reflected a bit in the scores, I'm afraid, Chris. So Michael only got a 3.3. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, I'm all all right with that. But I think Michael will show his true colours when we get him back on the show because I, I didn't do him justice. No, to be honest, I didn't do him justice. But so where does that put me? You're, right, still, you're still at the bottom, <laughs> Dafty. It's me to get the points. Right, oh shit, right, okay. <laughs> well, so, well done, Toll. You are still second place. Um, I've got a feeling that um, I'm going to catch you one day. Uh, I'm, on seven, I'm on 17.2. What am I on? 12.5? Yeah. 12.5, yeah. It's going to take a couple of years. It's going to... It's got to take a couple of sick days in that for you for me to get uh, up to where you are, isn't it? I know, and you're likely to have sick days before me, so. <laughs> Fuck I know, man. Right, well, we're recording this uh, this wee part of the show separate for the main show. Is uh, Bob, he is one of the most busiest men. You've wrote here he's the busiest man in Scotland. He's not as busy as me, all right? Uh, so as a result, Bob has had to go away day social media for River City to discuss his character's upcoming I better not write that. <laughs> <laughs> this is his upcoming death. Is that right? Is he getting killed up, uh, River City? No, that, that was a wind up. I, I, I said that that was a wind up. We get, <laughs> we get pulled, well, we get he still, he still wants us. He, he still wants us part of the show to happen. So please welcome to the show a very, very special guest. Bob let us know just before he bailed there. We we're actually quite surprised, weren't we, though? I'm devastated about this. To be honest with you, this is going to put him. He's not. He, we're not going to be able to catch him after this one. You think so? Ah, uh, yes. This, this is a top on me because this is going to bring in people that wouldn't normally listen to football daft as well. So I, I think we're fucked here, grads. To be honest with you, mate. Well, let's uh, let's. I mean, it's good. It's good news because it is a cracking guess, but he is going to absolutely. Uh, he's going to. He's going to kill it this week with the ratings because he has got on the show the creator of Kingsman, Kickass. Did he write Avengers Civil War? He did. Avengers Civil War. My I God, I've it. seen that. He's now a legend of Scottish football after launching a state-of-the-art camera system set to change the way football is viewed in this country and potentially elsewhere. And it all starts with his home team of Albion Rovers. Please yes. welcome none other than Mark Miller. How are you doing, Mark? Hello. Hey, not too bad at all. Hey there. It's, it's good to get you on the show. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Oh, not at all, not at all. I need to avoid work. Mark, we'll I, would, I would have thought a man of your your technical know-how and expertise would know how to work the camera. No, I'll, do you know what? I'll show you, I'll show you my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not on the screen, mate. Oh, is it? I'm not? Hang on. No, that's what oh! I'm saying. Your camera's not working. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, anybody can get a deal with Netflix. <laughs> Hang on, is that me? There we go. Just yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, nice wee wing no, back chair in that, my man. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, but this, this is my actual phone, so I've had to do it on my, my wife's. Like I, I've, I've had this phone for twenty years. You know, really? Amazing. Is that that always that always surprises me when you see people that have never. The, they, they don't have the digital phones. They don't have the smartphones. They like to keep uh, keep keep it real with the with the thirty three ten and all that. Is that the way? Well, you keep, you keep it cheap. You know, I'm tight. I mean, that's that's the main Aye. thing. You know, but my my philosophy is I'm never buying anything until the last thing breaks. So the minute something breaks, I'll buy a new phone. But this phone, it's a wee Nokia. You could drive over it in a car. It'll be fine. Has it has it got what, what kind of is it got Snake too? Because it's a Nokia, isn't it? It's the one before Snake started. It's uh, oh, it's pre Snake. There's no games at all. It literally just makes phone calls. Just makes phone calls. I see. Well, I tell you what. I bet that takes a lot of hassle, a lot of stress off you having that wee Snyder your phone. You know, it's, I mean, I've got quite a stress-free life. It's, I can't check emails, and people send me texts, and I don't reply. 
because I don't really know how to do text. So yeah, like, that's uh, a, yeah. a, a crazy. It's, like I just said a couple of minutes ago, for a for a man that's at the forefront of the the push towards technology for Scottish football, <laughs> to, to, to no bother his arse replying to an email. That's, that's <laughs> magic, man. That's magic. <laughs> you know, you know Tony Scott, the guy who directed Top Gun and everything. Uh, yes. I was doing a film with him about ten years ago. And the most amazing thing he did was he didn't do emails. What you would do is you'd email him, then his secretary would read out the email, and then he would write a note and take a photograph of it, and then his secretary would put that note on an email and send it to you. That's <laughs> well, that's, that's yeah, it takes all sorts in that. Hollywood. It takes all sorts in Hollywood, my man. Doesn't it? <laughs> but Mark, listen, mate, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm a bit gutted because it's the Legends Lottery part of the show. Stephen's starting to make a bit of a, a gap between himself and me and Grado now, and I think yeah. you're definitely going to put him over the top here with this one because you will attract uh, people who wouldn't normally listen to the show. Uh, so we're going to talk about football, though, what, before I start going off on my fanboy rant after, after the football talk, right? Yeah. We're going to talk about football. Mark, talk us through... What, what you've put in place, not just with Albion Rovers, but with other clubs in Scottish football. I'm really, I'm really excited about this, to be honest with you. So am I. I I'm genuinely excited about this. You know, in lockdown, everybody was going mad and mm. like you were just bored. And one good thing about doing what we do is the job's quite creative and you can do it from the house and come up with ideas and things, you know. And I just do that all the time. So whether I'm writing comics or films or, or whatever, you know, I just love coming up with new ideas. So lockdown, in a way, I could sort of escape it by just thinking about other stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I went to bed one night and I was saying to my wife, I'm really worried about Albion Rovers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I say that to my missus every night when I'm going to bed. <laughs> and she was like, why? And I was like, well, I was on Facebook and one of my pals, who's a massive Rovers guy, you know, he was retweeting this thing saying, uh, you know, they need 10 grand to get through summer just to get through to the new season. And I was thinking, God, that 10 grand's not going to go far. You know, like, I mean, the drink spill alone in the boardroom, you know, it's like, it's going to go quick, isn't it? So, like, I was kind of like, well, what's going to happen if there's a second wave and all that? You know, like, these clubs are getting wiped out, you know? And, and I really, I was quite disturbed. I went to sleep and then I woke up early next morning. And it's the way it works with a film for me sometimes as well, like a comic, an idea, that you get up and you start scribbling notes and you start thinking, right, okay, here's the solution to this thing. So what I did was, um, and I thought it has to be televised in some way. It has to somehow get lower division football on TV. But there's the obvious problem with that, which is there isn't a big enough audience to justify a 20 grand van sitting in the stadium, like mm. sending this stuff back to ITV or BBC or whatever. Not and just that as well, Mark. You know, if you if you sit a 20 grand van outside Clifton Hill, yeah. when you come back, <laughs> the wheels are away, mate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that was the thing. I was just like, there has to be some way around this because it's so expensive to televise football. And that's why it's just Celtic and Rangers and Hearts and Hibs, you know? So, like, um, so I, was, I spoke to some TV guys. I phoned the heads of BBC, ITV and everything. They were saying, look, this is impossible. It can never happen. Uh, just the numbers don't add up for this. And, uh, but then I got talking to a, a couple of interesting guys. Ian McNown, who's the SPL chairman um, at Stenhouse Muir. He's a really interesting guy, you know, like, it's funny because Scottish football, you imagine it's a bunch of old guys, you know, who are living in 1955 or something like that. But Ian's like, you know, probably about 40 or something like that. He's ex-army and all this kind of thing. He's, just, he's not what you'd expect. And he's got a really interesting day job and everything, you know. So I was kind of like, you know, he seemed like a great ally. Once I got speaking with him, you know, he came up with some great stuff. And uh, he, was, he was really interested in this. And we were trying to figure out a way to do it. And he said it would be cool to stream it in some way, but that could be cheaper. And we talked about the idea of all the games being played in one stadium and then all streamed, you know, like between nine and five, Saturdays and Sundays, stream all the games for the for uh, League One and Two, you know. Um, and but that just seemed, it just seemed like a massive hassle. Everybody wants to use their own grounds and all this, you know. And then I spoke to a pal of mine called, called uh, Liam Nugent, and he's got a digital platform company. And I put him in touch with Ian. And then we all just started a wee email chain and we were just, and they came up with this brilliant idea which is cheaply streaming all the games out to anybody who wants to see them. So it's kind of like, you don't even have to be confined to Scotland now. What you can do is you could watch an Albion Rovers Stenhouse Muir game 
if you live in Toronga in New Zealand, you know, you just pay a small fee and then you can watch the game. And it monetizes things for the clubs. It means the clubs can actually get paid and see through this bad time. It means people can see the football, the, play, the players can play, the league continues. So the Premiership will be fine. They'll be looked after because they're so rich. But this could give us a Premiership type deal at a lower level. No, I actually think that this could put the, the lower leagues over the Premiership in money terms eventually, which is going to open up a whole lot of doors for, for the future of Scottish football. I, I spoke to John and Grado and Stephen about this last week, and I'm buzzing about this, I really am. Yeah. I, I really am. It's, it's something that I believe should have been done a long time ago. A long time ago. I mean, there's no reason. Scottish, Scottish football clubs should have taken the rights to their, their own games yourself and done this what you're doing a long time ago you know it's funny though it sometimes just needs that we shove doesn't it and it's mm-hmm. interesting like sometimes bad times can create quite good things you know like if everything is lost then everybody's like okay we have to rethink the wheel and, and that's that's kind of interesting isn't it maybe it took something catastrophic before people thought well let's take a risk instead of the 400 people who show up on a saturday just keeping our head above the water let's think massive you know this could be huge like see my cousins in canada australia and new zealand they can't wait to see these games because the first thing they do when they come back to Glasgow is let's go and see an Albion Rovers game or a Celtic game or something. Aye. Mark, talk us through the, the, the bit of kit that you're using because, I mean, I've had a, look, a look up the Argos catalogue. You kind of get one of them in there. <laughs> Where'd you get that bit of kit? That looks... Where'd you get that from? Well, it's, it's an Israeli company, you know, like uh, it's a thing called Pixelot and uh, it, it's just tech I didn't even know existed. It's absolutely mad. So you can... You can actually watch the games, rewind what you've just seen, zoom in and have a wee look to see if that header was as good as you thought it was. And, uh, and then it's all tied in with this AI package that my pal Liam's come up with, which is um, where you basically, the referee's wearing this Robocop style thing on his, on his watch and everything he's, he's seeing is coming on TV and you can watch it from all different angles. Now, this is, I mean, it's, it's bonkers. It's, I mean, it's like Blade Runner or something. I, I didn't even think this tech existed, but the guys, the guys assured me it does. And then I was delighted when we went out and saw it all working and looking brilliant. So answer me this one then. We've got, the referees have got this on their wrist. Yeah. Does that mean that they can check a decision on the spot? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So do you think in the long run that this could potentially replace VAR? Oh, definitely. I think so. I think Rangers are in trouble now that now that uh, you know the referees are going to be unbiased. Now it's a computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Come on, I didn't care. He was going to ask you on. I said no, but it's it really it really is. It's encouraging, and I I can't even believe it's took a guy for Coat Bridge to to do this, man. Oh, Honestly, it's amazing. What do you mean, Coat Bridge? Is brilliant. Coat Bridge, Mark. Come on, you should know this. <laughs> Coat Bridge. Um, but, it's got me, you, Fran and Anna, Hugh and Cry, you know, it's like, come on. Oh, Hugh and Cry. Time Peter capsule. Grant. Time Peter capsule. Grant. Peter Grant, <laughs> the time capsule, the Beth Park, you name it, mate, we've got it. <laughs> Bring it on. Where about Coat Bridge did you grow up then? Uh, Coat Dyke, just literally at the, at the corner of the Beth Park. Coat Bridge was the, po- uh, Coat Dyke was the posh part. I remember um, when we, we used to walk up to Airdrie Baths and we'd be like, oh my God, look, these people are living like millionaires here. We thought really? Coat Dyke was really plush. We always really liked it. Yeah. It's actually... Did you live uh, next uh, Beth Park? Uh, the next, three, the next three overs, Clifton Hill. That's of course. Sta- I, I can see the stadium from my house, basically. That's so, why. They're losing money. It'd be better. They should build a higher wall. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, they, they don't need to for me. I'm only three foot nine. So. <laughs> but when I put my boy in my shoulders, he gets to see the football. But, uh, no, Mark, I said, I've, I've been a huge fan of your work for a long time, but obviously explained to Grado and Stephen earlier on that you once done an X-Men. And uh, all the goodies were green and white, and all the baddies were red, white, and blue. That's right. Yeah. What, yeah. what was your I... thinking behind that? What was your? <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't need to answer that one. <laughs> no, it was funny because it was basically nobody outside of Glasgow got this, you know. And yeah, what it was was I had uh, the X Men came to Scotland as part of this big international storyline where they travelled all over the world, and then there was a big fight in Scotland, and the bad guy was wearing a ranger stop. But to anybody else, it's a T-shirt, you know? And, like, I somehow manoeuvred the story so that Wolverine was freezing and put on a Celtic scarf to try and stay warm. And the big conclusion is him stabbing, <laughs> stabbing the body in a ranger stop. You know, it's like, I don't know what was going through my head. You know? I, I, think, I think I know what was going through your head, but we best know so. <laughs> Mark, um, I, I actually, I'm a big, well, I would say a big fan of your I don't watch films, right? I'm a big wrestling fan, right? Right. 
Well, I'm on a wrestler. I've always wanted to know. Do you like wrestling? I know this is a football podcast, but I need to know. I, I miss the age wise. I've just turned 50, and I think guys who are two years younger than me are wrestling fans. It's like Transformers, Transformers right. and Thundercats. Guys who are two years younger than me love Transformers. I missed it. I was, I was just two years out from that. So when I was at school, no, nobody was into wrestling. I just thought you, I just feel as if sometimes you can, can make a connection between comic book fans and wrestling fans. Do you know, John? Oh. That's what I feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There's a, the, on the Venn diagram, the crossover is almost a hundred percent. Like, see if, see if you see if you go if you go to a, a comic convention, there's always wrestlers there and everything, you know. And, right. and I'm, I, I meet wrestlers through work because there's a Hollywood crossover with wrestlers as well. Like, you know, Tyler Main, yeah, the wrestler. Like, uh, he's in our new thing as the bad guy. Like the new show we've got on Netflix. Tyler uh, Main played uh, played the uh, saber tooth in the X Men movies. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. He's massive, man. Huge, yeah. Big, big it, guy. it looks great in a fight scene. And wrestlers have got a charisma. There's a, there's a real oh, yeah. charisma to wrestlers. And, you know, you can smell it off actors. Like, there's no nerves when they're on stage and they're larger than life. So it works really well in a superhero thing. Like, remember the first Spider-Man movie had uh, Randy Savage? That's, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, well you've got Guardians of the Galaxy with big Dave Batista as well. Uh, I mean, there was that guy like. He's absolutely amazing, isn't he? Every line is brilliant. Yeah. I'm a bit of a beast myself. I know you, you have you've a bit of a relationship with, with well, you can I provide is it a school in Cope Bridge that come along to the, the pavilion each Christmas? St Ambrose, mate. Yeah. Uh St. St. Bertolli is the primary. Aye, aye, there's a connection there. That's brilliant every year. But you know what you need to do? You need to get them to come to the wrestling at the pavilion and watch me. Do you know that's a good idea? That is how does that work? Because you know the way wrestling has to be kind of everybody watching all the way around. Do you guys all watch from one side? What's the, yep. what's the well, there's a, there's an app to it, Matt. You know, you've got to work to the one side. It's all about working sides in the ring. Because of the crowd are there, you work all to the one Credo, side. Credo, are, are you telling the man that's made some of the biggest movies in Hollywood history how to work a camera, mate? <laughs> Come on, turn that off, you. No, but I have I mean, to... I've been fascinated by this because I thought, do you have to just face the same way all the time, which must be kind of weird when you're fighting. And you know, does does it work? Uh, basically, you know, we, we, we all sell to the one side or the one yeah. corner because the fans are there. And right. obviously, and, and when we're when we're on TV, it's sort of the one hard cam. Everything's kind of focused towards that. So it is yeah. a bit difficult when you're in the ring and the crowd on the other side. You end up having to shovel your way. You know, I'll maybe take a someday and a heel and go right there, right there. <laughs> <laughs> To, to, so that the, the, the crowd can see it. But I'm going to piss everybody off talking about wrestling. Chris, have you got any further questions? <laughs> no, but I've, I've got another superhero question. Have you ever thought about writing a dwarf superhero and making a movie about him and casting a guy for Coat Bridge? <laughs> you know, Wolverine's, Wolverine's supposed to be five feet tall. Is that right? Well, yeah. uh, uh, Hugh Jackman doesn't want to play him anymore, so... <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the weird thing, Wolverine in, in the comics is only five feet, but like uh, in the movies, Hugh Jackman's six foot two or six foot three. And oh, they had to get around this in the film, and they always had the guy who played Cyclops standing on a box. Don't know if you've ever noticed it. <laughs> James Marsden's only five foot ten, so they put him on a box whenever he's in any scene with Hugh Jackman. Really? I never noticed that. I love the X-Men no. movies, but, but my favourite ones that you do are the Kingsman movies, man. I fucking yeah. love them. There's I'm, one I'm, set, I've got one in the house that nobody's seen because of COVID. It was supposed to come out, it was supposed to be out months ago, and then right. it was supposed to come out in September, uh, wow. and then it got bumped back. The premiere was last week, and we so had to bump it back, so it's, it's going to be Valentine's next year. Yeah. So I'm literally the only person that's seen this. I'm just sitting watching it like it's a whole Until later on when I come run and chop your door. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and you should pirate it. Why don't we pirate it? We'll go around the pubs and we'll sell it. By well, owns his home again, so... Oh, Happy days, man. I mean, I think if five of it, we could probably make about 25, 30 quid out of this. Aye, and that, that could get you another one of the referee hangs for the run. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, this is all, this is all, this is great. <laughs> so, so, Mark, uh, what's, what do you hope in the future uh, with regards to football? Are you going to be uh, moving this out to other platforms, other teams, other countries? Is that, the, is that the big idea? Is that the big plan? Well, it's interesting, actually, because we pl- I planned it as an Albion Rovers rescue, you know, like I say. But then I realised we had to make this more than just Albion Rovers very quickly, because Sorry, otherwise man. there's no other clubs There's no other clubs yeah. to play if they all go under, you know. So the idea yeah. was to try and get everybody in on it. But I'll tell you what's amazing. 24 clubs came in on it. And I thought we'd get 10 or something. I thought maybe over time you would see success and then people get into it, but they, they, they realise this is the only option, this is what's going to save us in a second wave, or even just another restrictions, you know, where you can't get people in the stadiums. 
And uh, Albion Rovers, because it's quite quiet, it's actually not too bad. You can space everybody out quite well. You know, but some of the busier clubs in, uh, in League One, you know, it's, it's going to be a wee bit harder. But, like, uh, I've realised that I think it's going to catch on everywhere. I think in England this is going to be big, and I think it's going to be international really, really fast. Um, especially in this time. I don't think people will waste time either. I think this is going to go mega. And I'm actually not making any money out of it. I mean, because a couple of people said to me, oh, is this your company and everything? I was like, no, no. We, we literally just set this up and we donated cash and then we we're stepping back and letting the guys get on with it, you know? So if it becomes mega, I'll see nothing out of it. But the one thing I will be delighted about is that we still get low division Scottish football. Because I, I hate it. Imagine all the games were just the big games. You, I love going to these wee clubs and it's like the Bruins, isn't it? You know, when everybody, everybody knows each other in the stadium. I know every single person sitting at Albion Rover Stadium. I mean, you're standing waiting on a pie, you're talking for half an hour to somebody, you know, it's, it's nice. You don't, you don't get that anywhere else. You know what? It's, I, I fully agree with you, but Gredo and Steven slagged me because I used to go to all different clubs to watch to watch football when I was younger. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had a season ticket at Albion Rovers for a few years. I've been at Easter when I went to Falkirk, Wraith Rovers, Airdrie, you name it. Yeah. I've been everywhere, right? And they too ripped the absolute push out of me for it. But this is the sort of thing that's going to bring these clubs back to the fore. And... I, I'm, I, I know I keep saying it, but I'm buzzing about this. I really am. I think it's going to be great, not just for Scottish football, but for football in general across the across. I think the it'll democratise it again because there is something weird, isn't it? You kind of forget that Celtic and Rangers and all that are just local clubs. They mm. they just started as local clubs and then they grew into these machines, Manchester United, and everything. But mm. there's nothing stopping things for just going mental. There, there could be too much money coming into Albion Rovers soon, which I, I kind of love the idea of them just making too much dough, you know, and you could. God knows what you could do at the stadium. You know, you could buy some brilliant new players and everything. You know, mm-hmm. like within a year, Scottish football could look quite different with this. You know, I certainly, agree. Certainly is, that, is this going to be ready to go for the start of the this season in the world? Oh yeah, it's, it's operational. It's now operational. I mean, I don't know. With, you know, the restrictions change every day. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but like, uh, there's supposed to be a night. Uh, there's Albion Rovers Stenhouse Muir game that we've been invited to watch and it's just see the whole thing up and running. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they were the two clubs that were kind of at the forefront of this whole thing. Um, mm-hmm. So it'd be quite nice, you know. There's there's a wee bit of it. It's like a twin town, isn't it? Like like Stenhouse Muir now feel like our wee affiliate club, and I kind of I like them. Yes, and I'm kind of rooting for them now. I, I said, but you'll see, uh, you can't tell us to any fans that because they think that they're a bigger club than Albion Rovers. We know that they're not really right, but they they think that they're, you know. So just don't don't alienate them at the beginning of your lovely relationship. <laughs> is what I'm saying, Mark. Well, it's funny. I went to see an Albion Rovers Celtic game a couple of years ago. And I always thought of myself as about 50-50 Albion Rovers and Celtic. Yeah. And then it was actually weird because I was obviously in the Albion Rovers' ends mm-hmm. and I saw Celtic score three goals in the second half and I actually felt sick. And it was really yeah. weird. And I, and I realised <laughs> I'm about 75%, 25% of my Albion Rovers game. Ah, uh, well, the, the next X-Men comic only to have red, red and yellow outfits in, my man. <laughs> I'll get it in Kingsman. I'll get, get it in Kingsman somehow. Make, aye, make, <laughs> make, make Taron Edgerton wear an Albion Rovers strip. <laughs> right, that, that's brilliant. Bring it on. Well, it's funny. We're, we're doing a film with Charlize Theron at some point, and my plan was always to get an Albion Rovers top on her. You know, get bring her again. Well, do you know, I'll, you know, it's weird. Brad Pitt comes out quite a lot. The Brad Pitt comes to Glasgow a lot, and you'd be surprised the number of people from Hollywood to hang about. You know, and like Brad Pitt comes once a year up to Glasgow. He absolutely loves. It. Really, I did not know Maybe. that. But... Was that? Is he been in the uh, oh yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's, what he does is he jumps on the train. He's usually in London for something. He'll put on a baseball cap and a pair of sunglasses. Come up to Glasgow, spend two or three days just by my. I'm about. sure. I'm sure I seen him in the Brooklyn front last year. I knew. <laughs> right. Do you know? Do you know? How, listen, Grado. Do you know how Brad? You know how? Do you know how you know that Brad Pitt's a Celtic fan? How's that? Because he looks like one, mate. <laughs> 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 I thought I seen him. Sh- I thought I seen him chatting uh, Real Britannia with the Union Bears last year. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know the words, but listen, Mark. I know that you're going to be pushed for time, mate, and I really appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, no, it's no. been it's been a great eye opener, and again for a guy for Coat Bridge to to have brought this to Scottish football is a huge shot in the arm, not only for Scottish football, but for football all over the place. So thanks Coat again. Coat Bridge is Scotland's that. secret weapon. Coat Bridge is Scotland's secret weapon. It's like, it? it's funny, no matter where I am, I always love to go back and get a wee recharge. And my, my wife used to be baffled by it. She's from England. 
And she's like, why do we keep going to Cobridge? Bridge? And now she loves it. And I even, I even take her to Airdrie sometimes as a wee treat. We go to the Cozy Cafe in Airdrie. So I'd say we're in the Cozy Cafe twice a month in Airdrie, which is, which is brilliant. Uh, the Cozy Cafe is halfway up uh, that, West, that hill. West yeah. George Street, yeah. Uh, or West Bridge, uh, South Bridge uh, Street. South Bridge Street, actually. Yeah. I, I used, used to, South, South Bridge, Bridge Street? Street. Yeah. South Bridge Street, did your fella know one up up there till now? Shut up, Grado. <laughs> hey, Mark, me and, me, and my, me and my dad had pubs all over the place. We had, you remember Enigma? Yeah. I, right, that, yeah. I took that over and changed it to 24. My dad had the Argyle Bar. No so, way. Uh, I, what, year, so, what years did your dad have that? Um, I, well, we've actually, we've got a friend in common. Jerry Diamond was round at my house watching the game the other night. Yeah, he's one of my great pals. Huh? Yeah, and I was, I I was, was just telling emailing him, that, him earlier on. I was telling him that you were coming on the show, and um, right. so he says he says not to not to piss you off because you've 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 got a lot of, you've got a lot of stuff to give to Scottish football, and I think that <laughs> I think you've proven that so far. Would you reckon, Gredo? Uh, absolutely, it's, I can't wait to get it all up and running. I think it's going to be fantastic. As told you said earlier on, there's so many there's so many different opportunities. I even think as well with the fans because you said it's like going to the Bruins. Get the fans involved as well. Now you have Arsenal fans TV. I want to hear Air United. I want to see Air United fans on Netflix talking no, that, about football. That's total entertainment. No, this this is one hundred percent happening. By the way, I don't, I, I'm not sure if they covered much of this in the the PR for this, but the idea is we're going to link up with a lot of colleges and universities, a lot of media students coming in and actually getting really articulate fans from the stadium and making them into presenters. So they become regular personalities and each one will be different. Like the guys from Stenhouse Muir and the guys from Inverness Cali Thistle and the guys from Cope Bridge are going to be so different. They'll have their own identities. So it could be really, really interesting. You're going to have a lot of interesting new things bursting out of this. So that's 100% this month, that's the plan. It's kind of as if you're taking the game back for the fans and that's, that as well is a huge thing. I think the, the games became distanced from the support. Yeah. Quite a lot because of the amount of money that's involved in it and because of how one misstep can put a club back a couple of years. Yeah. You know, they, I think they forget about the fans and I think that uh, what you're doing here is definitely going to bring the fans back into the game. Because let's be honest, football was started as a working man's sport and it's no longer that, isn't it? Not if we're, if we're honest with ourselves. So. I mean, the premiership's run by accountants, right? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, these none of the guys really playing for the clubs really care about those clubs. You know, they've, they've, they've followed the check, you know? And mm-hmm. I kind of love the idea of an affordable season. Right? Imagine people being able to afford to go with their kids to a game. Like hard, yeah. Everybody I know who takes their kids to the games are pretty well off. You know, like guys like my dad could never have afforded to take us at the prices things are now in the Premiership, you know? Whereas, I'll be wrong. That, he's, Jerry, he's, Jerry Diamond took his two boys to every game, so he must be hell of a lot. He's pretty rich. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, kids get in for free to Albion be Rovers quite a lot. There's a lot of deals. They'll pay a pound or they get in for nothing. That's kind of the way it should be, isn't it? The seats mm. should be filled with local people who just love it. And I love the idea of we guys being into their hometown team. I mean, what could be better than that? You know, like, when I was growing up, a lot of East End guys supported Celtic. Guys out Rangers way supported Rangers and everything, you know, like your local club, you, you should be able to walk to the game, you know. Ah, you're right, you're right. Well, it's uh, again, Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very much for thanks coming for on, me. and thanks very much for getting Steve in a, another perfect fucking score for the. <laughs> <laughs> that was superb, man. That was really good, man. Really, really good. That's, that's the only downside to this. You know, I'm sitting know. here talking to one of my heroes. And I know that Stephen's getting the fucking rub for it, and I'm raging. I'm raging. <laughs> Stephen's a legend, what can I say? You know? I will. He's a legend <laughs> in his own house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Mark, th- thanks very much for coming, mate. Not at all, all the best. All the best, guys. Bye right, bye. Right. What, what do you think you're at then, Grads? I know we're missing Stevie. He had to boost. Uh, but. I think it's been a, 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 a productive day to day. Definitely. I think talking to that guy, because like, before I listened to him talk, I maybe just thought that he's just supplied them with some cameras and all that. Oh. But in actual fact, he's got his, he's got his uh, fit right in the door with this. He's really wanting to get involved in it, so. Right, in case, you're, in case you're wondering, ladies and gentlemen, that guy that Gredo's talking about is Mark Miller. One of, one of the greatest comic book inventors and the man that's pulling Scottish football for its bootstraps back into the fucking 21st century, right? So, that guy, Gredo, give him his name, put some fucking respect on that. Who's he ever pinned? Who's he ever pinned? <laughs>
Fuck me, don't be a mark. I'm glad Why, to see Ste- Stephen's gone so the wrestling chat starts. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, man. Out the room. Welcome to Wrestling Sorry. Dad. Sorry. I'm your host, Chris Toe. I'm here with Grado. I'm replacing Rab Forms. But we've got the same haircut. Brilliant. Right, uh, not listen, good. Rob Jones, brilliant as well. Uh, very informal, speaks very well, very articulate. Um, and obviously had a, had a sterling career at Hibs and, and other places. Uh, but I've, I've enjoyed it this week, man. It's been good, man. We've had a Hollywood guy on, we've had Rob Jones, <laughs> um, but what we haven't had is a certain story about you, possibly. I mean, you've touched on it before, but you've never managed to get around to it, I think, today. I want to know about that time you nearly got in Big Brother. Gredo, Stevie's not here, mate. I can't do it without him. Right, fair to us, mate. Hey, okay, can we give Alan Coombe's story again, though? <laughs> I think that's funny. Is that funny? Was it that bad? It was not bad at all. <laughs> I, was just, I was on Tinder <laughs> because I thought he was going to jump into a crowd like that hamburger player and give you a down. Booms! Right, I'm off before you. I want to go watch the Rangers. What channel are they on? Eh. Uh, Rangers TV. You've probably got yourself a membership already, big man. Just take your details in. Oh, no, I'll just use yours. Right, I'll catch you later, trip. <laughs> Hey, see you later. Hey, hey, bye 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 bye. Alright, it's time to stay football daft. Ah, is it just me and you then, John? Great one, you know what I mean? That's just it, that's the outro done there. Let, no, let's do, let's do something that none of the two of them know about. Alright, okay, aye. Show, right, what can we do? Hey, let's, let's put it out to, to the listeners, right? If you had to, what one of them would you winch? Would you winch Grado or would you winch Stephen? Oh, that's a good question. So, aye, they're both away, so, aye, good one. Who do you winch? Um, what's, what's that last if G1 claims called again? Nicole. No, no not Nicole. No, Nicole, I'm only joking. <laughs> no. Right, um, I would... You know what? I'd give them both a big hug, but my girlfriend wouldn't be too happy if I winched one of them, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, well, you've got to choose one. If you're making the listeners choose, Chris, you've got to choose one. I tell you what, I'll put it out to the listeners, and if we get enough, if we get enough answers for this, then I'll give you my answer next week while the two of them are on the show. Right, okay then. So get uh, let us know who you'd like to winch, Gradle or Steven, and then we'll find out who Chris wants to winch. I'm going to I'm going to put my cards on the table and say Gradle just because of the height. Because Aye, well, ah, well, that's a good point. I might need to go for Stevie so that I'm not on my tiptoes too much. True, true, true. You'll have to have a think about it and you can let us know next week. Right, okay, do I'll do that, mate. But listen, thanks very much. We had a great fun this week. Absolutely. All the best tricks. Audio Frontier.